Okay guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. Uh, we have another video here. Uh, this is a 2014 Kia Soul with a 1.6 engine GDI. The problem with this car, it wasn't an accident, a front end collision. And uh, it broke the radiator and uh, the engine kept running, you know, with no cooling. So when the technician that was doing the body work went to install the radiator, he was, you know, just doing the, no, the normal way. It was no vacuum. We used the vacuum uh, system to refill. So he tried, you know, just the regular way, just support the, the cooling and then pressurize the systems to see if it wasn't leaks. And when he was pressurizing the system at the beginning, like maybe the first five seconds, it was pressured and then boom to zero, to zero, no leaks. So the engine is not starting and the problem is because the coolant is going inside the cylinders so we're going to remove the head on this car for this uh job you need to remove the engine cover for the timing which is right at the front and uh you need to remove the alternator the motor bracket which is you know that uh mount for the engine right here you need to remove that in order to remove the the timing cover too as well so I will be showing more and more of the video. I hope you guys like it and please stay tuned. Okay, I brought the border scope uh, out to check the cylinders inside. So I removed the coils, the coils, which is really simple. You just remove the upper cover, which is just a plastic you pull out. And then the coils that are just uh, hold by a 10 millimeter bolt and the clips are very easy to remove. Let me just show you that. So you, what you gotta do is uh, push this uh, gray tab out and then push the inner tab, which is a black part, and you just pull the connection out. But so got, uh, we're going back to what I wanna show. My suspicions were 100% correct on the uh, cooling in the cylinders, and I wanna show you that on the boroscope. So let me see how I can show that to both, I mean, to, to you guys. I have that right now, the camera on the boroscope. Inside the cylinders, so hold on. One second, so I can bring the camera inside. So I hope that is showing very well. That's cylinder number one. You see all the fluid in there is from, I mean, that's cooling. So let me go to cylinder number two. I'm going inside the cylinder, pull the spark blue hole. It's a little hard. So same thing with that one. See the fluid right there. There's a lot of fluid. And I mean, the car has been sitting for like four days before I can. I could work on it. We went out to cylinder number three. I think the only one that I didn't see with cooling was number four. Yeah, that one has a lot of cooling too as well. As you can see right there. And then finally, and not really necessary, is this is what I'm going, just going with a borescope camera inside. Position. Yeah, like I said, you know, you can see right there that that one is the one that has the less fluid on them. Let me see if I can show you. But so the head is definitely even really warped. But we have a broken head. So that's what I wanted to show you guys. Uh, with these kind of things, uh, you have to be very careful and leave it open because uh, I mean you don't know what kind of damage the engine actually had you know we right now have a, a blown head gasket uh, it can be also a, a crack hit uh, cylinder head and uh, I mean we don't know if there's any damage on the bottom part so I will inspect that when I have the cylinder open see if it's you know heavy scratches on the cylinder walls and so if you have any you know if we have any band valves there's things that we don't you know we should know till we remove but I mean you can do a compression test and leak down test but with that cooling in there is truly not necessary no matter what that is going out so like I said let me start taking this apart I gotta race the car remove the engine undercover and I start working on the alternator and um, the front cover for the timing belt I gotta remove the back cover gas I mean the back cover too as well and I will be showing you guys that all right I got more things removed uh, pretty much all the wiring is uh, it's very easy just follow you know each connector and uh, be careful with the, with the clips this one is a 2014 so the clips are fairly 
soft it's still and not brittle because of the temperature and so so it's kind of like easier to do uh, you know a work like this in a car that is newer all right so I removed the upper radiator hose as you can see that's just normal times I did remove the air filter it's two 10 millimeter bolts and the battery tray and the battery the battery is held by a 12 millimeter bolt and then the rest of the bolts are 12 millimeters and it has I think two tens uh, one is the one that holds the computer on the back you just push the computer a little bit to the back and you need to remove an, another 12 that holds the, the tray for the battery I also remove uh, one of the bolts on the throttle body let me show you right here this one here it's because it holds the bracket so it's just this one on the bottom and start to remove the clip because it's facing you know towards the inside it's easier just to remove the bracket no matter what's just one bowl i uh, disconnect the throttle battery and uh, a couple of the air temperature sensors and so on there is right there i disconnect the vacuum hose from the harness because it has kind of like a bypass of, you know a metal line in between that is held by this bracket that holds all the wiring in place as that bracket is held by two 10 millimeter bolts to the head one is right here onto the high pressure uh, line to the high pressure pump remember this is a GDI system I'm going to remove that line no matter what my next step I think is going to be and removing the intake let us see how much clearance I have and then remove the vacuum cover gasket but again everything is going smooth as far as uh, it's removing I also disconnect all the, the oxygen sensors on the back trying to you know to make sure I can leave you know all on the side so nothing is going to affect me in order to remove the high pressure pump uh, connections you know the hoses the fuel lines this is a 90 millimeter this car has been sitting for a few days so when I just uh, removed there was no pressure in there it's normal you know the bleeds out a little bit especially through days and the one in here is uh, the same fit in itself it has a plastic that you just push and you, you push the hose inside like towards the engine and then the plastic uh, uh, clip inside the, the hose and it comes out very easy just be careful whenever you're doing this with all this uh, cam sensor connectors and so on I also remove the cool on temperature sensor which is in here the connector again this is just part of what the wiring that you see here is in there so I'm just clearing up as much as I can to, you know, to get the head out I'm going to remove the back and so on to the so I'm going to remove the go You will eliminate the squillings like that. Sorry for the loss of audio in that little part in the end. So what I was trying to say is uh, I'm going to pretty much reuse the serpentine belt in here because I got to remove the alternator. So whenever you're doing that, just you know, put an arrow on the out on the belt itself, like face it forward, like that, you know, with like a, a white marker or so. Then you can put the belt on the right direction, and it's going to eliminate the squilling when you do something like that. You know, when you replace the belt, and if you put it into any position, it has to like reset again the the rubber onto the pulleys. So this is just to make less possible that the belt is uh, will squeal. All right. Well, let me keep going and uh, I keep you guys, you know, posted with the advances on the video on this repair. Okay, I got the wheel out. Uh, I removed just a cover that is right here. Let me show you what I'm talking about. I'm putting all the parts that I'm taking off in here. That's just a plastic cover trim that goes on the side where the crankshaft pulley is. So I removed that one. It's a 2 10 millimeters. I removed the vibration damper, you know, the crankshaft pulley. And I remove the water pump pulley too. Those are the, the water pump is held by 10. I'm sorry, about four 10 millimeter bolts. And the one in the current pulley is a 21. I also remove as much as of the timing cover bolts as you can see here too. Those are also 10 millimeters. Um, I remove also a, one bracket that is under the intake manifold. You can see that hanging in there. It's just a one 10 millimeter bolt. Uh, Remove the undercover, it's held by three tens and um, four Phillips uh, plastic uh, clips. Alright, so I'm going to lower down the 
Well, actually, I want to remove the water pump from there to let the car leak whatever coolant is left in there. And then uh, bring it down to keep working on the top. All right, I got uh, the alternator out and the intake manifold. The intake manifold is held by uh, uh, 12 millimeters, three bolts and two nuts. As you can see there, it's pretty easy to remove. You have to take two of the coolant hoses that are here and the one in the back just you know remove the clamp and pry the hose out I did remove the uh, high pressure supply for the injectors out but that's pretty much what you gotta remove I'll show you the bracket that I removed from underneath actually it's not this one it's this one this is the one bracket that you remove from underneath and this one is the connector on the top it goes to the injectors and to the fuel pressure rail sensor right here uh, I also removed all the bolts on the back cover I haven't removed yet. I did remove also the high pressure pump. So the pressure from the pump is not a, you know, straight onto the back cover when I'm removing it. I don't want to break it or, you know, bend it. Uh, I see more coolant and everything on the valves. I don't know if the camera is picking that up, but you can see coolant here. All this is coolant right here, so. I mean it's been everywhere <coughs> so next step is I'm going to remove this I'm going to remove the engine uh, mount and then remove the cover on the front to see you know how the time is set up the timing and remove it because I have to remove the head gasket also the exhaust manifold which is in the back I still haven't worked on that at all so just I will proceed you know with the removing all right looking more apart um, I removed the injectors from the front that has like a foam make sure that you put that as kind of like insulation and a foam for noise so you don't actually feel that in you know when you start a car uh, make sure also when you remove the high pressure pump to take the cam file or it usually stays on the bulk cover gaskets these are the two solenoids for the intake and exhaust for the uh, you know the cam advancer or sprocket and uh, I remove all the bolts for the exhaust manifold in the back they're 12 millimeters and uh, it has a 14 millimeter from underneath on a bracket that you need to remove in order to to release that uh, exhaust manifold so it kind of like lays down I also remove the two uh, rubber uh, supports on the muffler itself on the exhaust on the, on the on the pipe so you can you know like push the muffler a little bit further also this pipe pass uh, line it goes from the thermostat that you will see right there I removed it it's a 10 millimeter right here uh, you know right where that bracket goes but in there and also it has a 12 millimeters in here I also got the um, water outlet from the back where the coolant sensor is I removed that no matter what I'm gonna have to take the whole head apart so as much as I remove is better uh, so I'm pretty sure I'm pretty pretty much ready to remove the engine mount and the front cover put the engine on timing or recheck the time make sure at least that is correct and then let's start to take the head apart all right, I got the timing cover off and I put the engine on time uh, in order to rotate it I just put you know an adjustable wrench on the front right there where the oil pump uh, is uh, running on on the, on the crankshaft it's like uh, hopefully you guys can see it has like two flat sp spots in there so what I did is I put the number one piston on top dead center is uh, since I got the spark plugs removed I just put it you know a screwdriver in the hole and then when the screwdriver reaches the app you know the Top most point that's the top depth center uh, let me show you the, the marks uh, you're so like the timing chain is supposed to have like a color links on it of course uh, those are probably gone by now actually you know I think they're still there now I can see it let me see if I can show you that to you guys but it's gonna be a little hard hopefully you guys can see that different okay right there so I'm going to use those when I reinstall most likely I'm going to put a new timing change on here and uh, the tensioner but uh, just in case I did my own marks too so this point uh, this hole that you can see right here 
and it has another one the same here so I did a mark with a punch right at the back on a, on these uh, cam uh, caps I put one in here in line with this one same thing I did on the back I have another one right there and underneath on the crankshaft I did a mark on on the inside hopefully you guys can see the mark right there so the one in the in the, the sprocket is obviously original and I did a mark right right there like that when I put the links uh, it has to match with those so right now I can remove the, the time you change for the cover you have to be a little careful because it has two dial pins one um, let me show you again where those are right under the water pump and the other one is on the back it's hard to see because it's a tight space in there so what I did is I pry a little bit with like a this bar that I have uh, let me show you that okay I got this uh, from uh, I think it was Cornwell no actually I think it was Michael who sold this to me so the nice thing about these uh, pry bars is uh, it's a set of three and I you can adjust the hook as you can see and it locks so it's very convenient because then you can put it into different positions and, and it helps you to you know to pry it so what I did is I put them on the tab pry a little bit and then as long as, as soon as I saw an open uh, I see an opening in here so I put them on the screwdriver moving it slowly slowly till I remove the cover I'm going to show you the vision I have from, from him too as you can see this is, this is a map book. but this is the same uh, principle and then here you can extend the, the bar so it goes very very long it's like probably I would say maybe like three and a half feet long close it and it goes to like uh, maybe two feet but it's the same thing so you push and it locks so they're very very good very convenient for boot chains and stuff like that you know? the, the regular pry bars are just a fix uh, angle so they don't work as well as those hopefully the audio was telling me uh, was uh, good and you guys can hear what I was talking about the pry bar okay so I have to remove the timing chains I need to clear all the clean all the silicone from the front but that will be later on when I'm you know preparing to install everything back my main goal right now is remove that head and see if it is any obvious uh, warpage I have a, a straight edge and the uh, gauge to check the, the head I will show you guys how, how that gets done too so I'm going to remove the cams and then remove the head I'm sorry guys but I forgot to also show you the the information this is from my done fix let me set up the let me turn this slide off all right so this is an identity fix uh, that's what they show you uh, this is uh, the bottom mark that I was telling you those are the upper ones in nozzle and uh, I didn't show that they each sprocket has a like a center line let me let me go over the car and show you that too because that's also will help you you know to set the location or the center of the of the sprockets uh, let me see okay that's a little too close okay that's one of the marks and the other one is right here so a little blurry but you guys will be able to see what I'm talking about all right so the engine is in time and let me remove and see how that looks okay so I remove uh, the cams and the timing change so the timing chain uh, you need to remove the tensioner you have to put a pin on it so it stays in but no matter what in this one I didn't care because I'm replacing it and then when you remove the tensioner you remove uh, the guides there's hole by uh, 10 millimeter uh, bolts the guides and the tensioner and then you just remove the chain then you remove all the caps from the camshafts uh, what I usually do is uh, I start from the center slowly so the pressure uh, releases evenly so you don't damage any of the caps in the exhaust or, or in the intake I also remove the head bolts already so the head is just ready to be uh, removed right now I want to show you the bolts and the caps and also the uh, 
uh, I did this with a foam because uh, uh, with these ones you have to make sure they are installed in uh, the specific place because this one has a, a specific thickness so if it is one is this is piston number one number two three and four so on exhaust side this is the intake and just in case I also put front of the engine in here um, the tool that you need to remove the head bolts is uh, M10 this is like a 12 point it has to be long because otherwise it would not go through the head uh, these are the bolts for the head for the in the head and these are all the caps all the caps the caps all the caps on the intakes uh, and the exhaust uh, camshafts are marked they have an arrow facing forward to this main cap and so they have exhaust one two three and four in uh, uh, direction so this is pretty much what I have done I also set up the camshafts on the side right here the intake and the exhaust are completely different so no need to mark because the exhaust one is the one that rides the high pressure pump and I put this cardboard in here so I'm going to put the head in there so that's my next step uh, let me show you the guides that I was talking about you know that's the that's the timing chain and you can see the links are colored and those are the guys are in perfect perfect shape no no damage or nothing in here the timing was good so I'll have to see if they want to just uh, if they want to reuse this or they want to put the whole thing new that's uh, not my call again so let me take the head and uh, proceed to check the 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 warpage. Okay, guys, I removed the head and I think this is no good news uh, for the client. And I think the engine is going to have to be replaced. I want to show you. Look at the amount of uh, carbon build up onto that's the coolant passage around the cylinders. And you can see the color of the cylinder is completely dark. I noticed that when I removed those caps on the for the valves, like if you can see this, it's kind of like very, very dark. That means it ran super hot. So the engine is spinning. I'm sorry for a finger in there. The engine is spinning, but this is definitely uh, a lot of temperature went in here. So I'm going to recommend replace the engine. This is no fix because I mean I can rebuild the engine but it's gonna be more expensive than getting an engine for the car so I think guys uh, this is probably the end of this video if it's not I'm gonna you know keep com you know continuing with the repair otherwise thanks a lot for watching and don't forget to subscribe and share my videos thank you so much